All right, welcome to Forecasting with Friends, everybody. Mike Iskovitz here, uh, friendless today. Um, but that's okay. You know, we have a lot of serious stuff to talk about. Obviously, Hurricane Helene, just a hellacious, ferocious storm. And so that's where we're going to begin. So the death toll from Hurricane Helene, according to Fox Weather, now exceeds 100 people uh, in enormous path of destruction that began in Florida with high winds and storm surge. Category four storm made landfall Thursday morning, knocked out power to millions, pushed floodwaters inland and then dumped heavy rain all the way to North Carolina. In fact, in the city of Atlanta, they issued their first flash flood emergency. And in fact, they set the two day record for rainfall in the Atlanta area, measured at the airport there more than 11 inches of rain. It's pretty devastating. Um, I know th this is not the only bad part of the city, so hopefully everyone's safe and got out. But obviously folks didn't move their cars in time. And look how fast the water is rushing too. So first responders had to perform hundreds of high water rescues, including in Tennessee, where helicopters rescued dozens of staff and patients who ended up stranded on the roof of a flooded hospital. Oh, man, it's it, it's it's a situation. We will get back to you in a little bit. I'm going to go see if I can help this lady out a little bit more. You guys, I'll be back. Well, that's somebody we know and love. That's Bob Van Dillen. We've had him uh, on the show before and look what he did. I got to tell you guys, this is actually my first time seeing this. I have to send him a note. I'm going to have to send him an email on this. This is incredible. I mean, when somebody's stuck in their car and you don't know if the water is going to keep rising or not, I think what he did there was amazing because if that water got any higher, she could have died in that car. And he was there to carry her out. That's amazing. Very, great guy. Great guy. Uh, good job there. Well, uh, obviously, Bob Van Dillen became a hero there reporting on the streets of Atlanta. Now, this is crazy. OK, sometimes people do get caught out there in the Gulf of Mexico. You wonder how the Coast Guard rescued a man and his dog. They were on a sailboat. How does that happen? I'm not victim blaming. How does that happen uh, on this? They were uh, right on the coast of Florida during Hurricane Helene. They had a 36 foot long sailboat, it became disabled and stranded. It was taking on water. Coast Guard member came down from the helicopter, gave them life jackets gave the dog a life jacket. Thank God they're OK. They are OK. Of course, the dog doesn't know any better. The human should have known better. Now take a look at this. This reminds me of Hurricane Ike, doesn't it? If you remember that here locally from 2008, dozens of boats ended up on the front lawns of homes in Treasure Island, Florida, after Helene slammed into the Gulf Coast. This is near St. Petersburg, shows you the destructive power of the storm, the storm surge. Unbelievable. Now, good news from Tampa General Hospital following Hurricane Helene's landfall. That's what's called an aqua fence. You see that the aqua fence was put up to keep water away from the generators. They sent out this video saying, yeah, it worked. This aqua fence, the barrier is designed to withstand storm surge of up to 15 feet. The water didn't get higher, but the strength of this thing to be able to hold back that volume of water, the pressure of the water. Remember the flooding that we had here in our own medical center here in the Texas Medical Center during Hurricane Allison. Um, and there were some barriers that were put up in place since then to try to protect it. But that is a product. Whoever invented that product, this is what you call proof of performance. And that's going to be a really big deal. And and probably they're going to get a lot of orders for new aqua fences. Uh, so let me um, discuss a little bit of some new developments. Um, and we're actually going to hear from Ramesha Shade and um, from uh, Allison coming up here in just a little bit about uh, what's been happening out there in the tropics. But I think uh, I'll give you a quick tropical update here because we did have a new storm that just formed this morning. So you're going to hear from Ramesha here in just a couple of minutes. Uh, Kirk actually was literally just added, you know, uh, pretty shortly after she recorded that. But here's a look at where we are in the season. So we're now up to the 11th 
named storm of the season with Kirk being updated this morning. Now, in the wake of Helene, I want you to know that Isaac, Joyce, Kirk, nowhere near the United States. These things are way out there into the Atlantic Ocean and really not going to be uh, a concern for us. Satellite view here right there in the middle of your screen. This is the visible satellite view of uh, newly formed tropical storm Kirk. So this one has winds right now of about 45 miles per hour. It is not going to come anywhere near the United States. OK, so don't worry about that. In fact, here's the forecast track over the next five days. This is the new. In fact, you know what? Look, they bumped the winds up to 50. Um, that as of the latest advisory, it's moving to the west at 12. It'll start to curve off toward the north and end up in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, most likely as a very powerful hurricane. This is a, a broader view again of that circulation and also some other action that's happening to the north. In the middle part of your screen is Joyce. That one's dissipating. And in the top, top part of your screen, you can barely even see it. There is Isaac, which right now is just a tropical depression, Isaac. And uh, let me let me uh, show you this. So this is um, the GFS or American computer model and you're going to see in the middle of your screen there what it's doing with uh, Kirk which is showing it strengthening considerably but notice there's also a little guy behind it there on the right hand side of your screen so that one could become Leslie or Milton uh, over the next couple of days as well and finally we're going to look at all of this in a lot more detail coming up that there are, are a few tropical waves and sort of bumps in the road that are going to be moving here into the Gulf of Mexico over the next few days that could lead to the formation of a tropical depression or even a tropical storm and it doesn't look like it's going to have a direct impact on the Houston area. All right, so stick around. We're going to hear on the latest of the tropics and a look back at what has been a remarkable hurricane season so far with Ramesha Shade and Allison Gargaro right after this. Fox 26 is your Gulf Coast Weather Authority. And while our area is vast, this storm could bring widespread flooding and dangerous winds to our entire Our state. forecasting zeroes in. These storm cells over the ship channel are particularly dangerous. From your here. community. Memorial Park is getting hammered right now with heavy downpours. Right down to your neighborhood streets. We're starting to see the water rise along Buffalo Bayou. It's hyper local coverage from your Gulf Coast Weather Authority only on Fox 26. Fox 26 News at 9. Our breaking bond reports hold judges accountable. A 20 year old charged with manslaughter. The News Edge at 10. Your clues help find the missing. Her son never made it to the Investigations city. that get results. Weeknights on Fox 26. Engaging and shareable. Visit the Fox 26 Houston Facebook page. Need a legal question answered? Fox 26 legal expert Chris Tritico can help. But this may be a pretty sizable claim that your sister has. Just send your legal questions to fox26law at fox.com. Then tune into Houston's morning show every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 a.m. to hear your questions answered. The news doesn't stop on weekends. We're learning more details about a story we first brought you yesterday morning. And neither do we. But as we head throughout the afternoon, that's when the rain starts moving in from the southwest. Fox 26 Morning News Weekends with Denise Middleton. Well, now to a story you'll see only on Fox. The family of a beloved bartender in North Carolina. And meteorologist Allison Gargaro. Right now, we are seeing some of the heaviest rain start to push off to our... Fox 26 Morning News Weekends, Saturdays and Sundays beginning at 5 a.m. The Fox 26 weather app with more features in one easy to use screen. Current weather at a glance, high resolution interactive radar, severe weather alerts, video forecasts, and much more. It's the power of your Gulf Coast weather authority in the palm of your hand. The Fox 26 weather app, download it today. The Fox 26 YouTube page, your home for the best Fox 26 has to offer. The latest news. Good evening, I'm Caroline Collins. Topping the run. Our most popular local programs like the Isaiah Factor Uncensored. Why the hell are so many people burn out? And stories you may have missed from series like Breaking Bond. The quicker we get a grasp on what's happening. Sullivan Smart Sense and The Missing. Please pick up the phone and call the police. Remember, you can remain anonymous. The Fox 26 YouTube page. Like and subscribe today. It has been a very impactful hurricane season so far. Meteorologist Ramesha Shade 
uh, has an uh, overview of the season, talks about what we can expect for the next two months as well. Hello everyone, I'm Fox 26 meteorologist Ramesha Shade. Of course, we are still in the midst of a very busy hurricane season. All eyes have been on Hurricane Helene in recent days, but we've had quite a few systems to deal with so far for this season. So let me just give you an overview of what we have had to deal with. We've had Alberto, of course, that was the first name storm of the season. Then of course, Barrel hit the Houston area as a category 180 mile per hour hurricane caused widespread damage. Some of you may still be cleaning up from some of the effects of all of that wind and flooding rain from Barrel in Houston and surrounding areas. Then we briefly had Tropical Storm Chris, Debbie, Ernesto and Francine became hurricanes. Gordon, a tropical storm, of course, Helene, a monstrous category four hurricane, and then Isaac, a tropical storm. So now we've got more names on the list that we could potentially get to before the end of the hurricane season, which goes all the way through November 30th. Next name on the list would be Joyce. Hopefully we don't have it anytime soon, but of course we are monitoring the tropics closely. But I want to note that so far now we've had nine named storms for the Atlantic Basin 2024 hurricane season. Out of those nine named storms, look at this. One, two, three, four, five of those have become hurricanes and we've had two now become major hurricanes. So we are talking about a fairly active, busy season. So let's kind of see where we measure up as far as what the forecast was calling for. Before we get to that though, let's talk about the Saffert Simpson scale. This is basically how we measure measure the strength of these hurricanes. Of course, the hurricane that hit Houston was a category 180 mile per hour hurricane, but Helene grew to become a category four monstrous hurricane. So we have had quite a few of these systems so far this season. Of course, the strongest ones have been Barrel, which was briefly a category five, and Helene, which grew to a category four. So we've had two major hurricanes. I wanna go back and compare what we've had so far to what the main forecasts were calling for for this hurricane season. Of course, that's the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the NOAA forecasters, and the Colorado State University forecasters. So far, we've had nine named storms, CSU calling for 23 for the entire season out of those 12 becoming hurricanes. So far, we've had five hurricanes and we've had two of those five hurricanes become major hurricanes and CSU was calling for six for the entire season. Of course, NOAA calling for 17 to 24 named storms, eight to 13 hurricanes and four to seven major hurricanes. The average around 14 named storms, seven hurricanes and three major hurricanes. So we haven't gotten up to the 14 named storms. We've gotten up to nine named storms, but we still have the potential for more of these systems to get going throughout the remainder of September, even into October. And there's still a low shot for November. One of the reasons we've got a lot of super warm water out there in the Gulf of Mexico that extends out into the Caribbean Sea and also into much of the Atlantic. Check out these water temps, 80s, even a 90 degree water temperature there to the southeast of Florida and north of Cuba. So that just gives you an idea of just how warm and steamy that water is. That water helps, of course, to fuel these tropical systems. It helps to sustain them. It helps them to grow and strengthen. That was one of the reasons why Helene went through that rapid strengthening cycle and made that landfall in Florida as that major, powerful, dangerous hurricane. So we are monitoring what could possibly come after Helene. Of course, we are getting close to the month of October and here are some of the areas that we typically monitor for that potential for some hurricanes, maybe tropical storms, hurricanes, tropical depressions to develop. I think the highest risk is going to be in the western Atlantic down into the southeastern Gulf of Mexico and into the northwestern Caribbean Sea. That's where we have that likely category for some of these systems to develop. We've still got very warm water. We're not expecting a ton of shear to tear these systems apart. So those are some of the areas we're going to have to keep a very close eye on 
for the month of October. Now, what about the last month of hurricane season? That would be November, where hurricanes become generally more infrequent for November. Some brief hurricanes are possible across the Atlantic basin, but notice that orange color, the purples, reds kind of go away. We've got a few areas of yellow, meaning development is possible. That's going to be in part to the Western Atlantic and down into the Caribbean. There could be a low chance for development, but the chance really starts to go down really after the middle of October. November, it's not impossible to get a tropical system, but definitely it's a much lower shot. As far as being prepared, you certainly need to be prepared. Here are some hurricane safety tips if you are going to shelter in place. I know a lot of people don't evacuate, so make sure to be prepared for power outages. Of course, we had a ton of those during Hurricane Barrel. Remain indoors until an all clear is given. Cover windows with storm shutters and plywood. Have at least two weeks of emergency gear supplies, and you need to vacate mobile homes. They can get tossed around very easily do not tape those windows. As always, you need to stay connected to local media. That's why you have us right here at Fox 26 Houston, your Gulf Coast Weather Authority. We've had several landfalling hurricanes along the Gulf Coast this year. It's getting kind of scary out there. Meteorologist Allison Gargaro goes through each one of the storms and talks about the impacts not only felt along the coast, but inland across the USA. Hey everyone, I wanted to kind of break down what we have seen so far this hurricane season because it has been very impactful for landfalling hurricanes along the Gulf Coast states right here in the United States. So let's start with the first hurricane that impacted the US this year. And guess what? It impacted us right here in Southeast Texas. That was Hurricane Barrel making landfall as a category one storm. And you guys remember the impacts that were widespread across Southeast Texas. But the thing that we have been seeing with each of these landfalling US hurricanes was the impacts were felt far and wide outside of where landfall was made. So I'm going to go into more detail on what it did to each uh, and every hurricane, but I just want to go through them because there have been four so far this year. So barrel being the first, then we had Hurricane Debbie and it actually made two US landfalls. One of them in the Big Bend of Florida, then it went out into the Atlantic and actually made a second landfall in South Carolina. So we saw a good portion of the southeastern states getting impacted by that storm. After Debbie, we waited a little bit until there we go. Hurricane Francine, which made landfall along coastal Louisiana. So again, along the Gulf Coast, they got hit hard. And then most recently, which we have been talking about, was Hurricane Helene. And boy, that made a huge impact, not just in Florida, where it made landfall in the Big Bend, but all the way across the southeast. And, you know, just looking at these storms as a whole, these lines show and the colors show exactly where the center of the storm was. But the thing is, we've been talking about all season long that you cannot just look at the center of circulation where impacts are felt far and wide and mainly on the eastern side of each storm. So I want to actually take you out, not our seven day forecast there, but a look at those landfalls and going through them. So let's talk stats first on Hurricane Barrel. This has been our strongest storm so far this year. Category 5 storm at peak intensity. We had 165 mile per hour maximum sustained winds. That is just a monster of statistics just coming from a meteorological standpoint. Now landfall like we had talked about Southeast Texas was that category one storm which we saw so much damage here, but as it made its way across the US, we're talking from Texas all the way up to the Great Lakes. We're looking at Ohio, Michigan. There was a total of 67 tornadoes that were reported over a three day span. 
So that was very impactful even after we saw it make landfall. So it wasn't necessarily the flooding or the winds at that point. It was the tornadic activity that we were monitoring. Let's go out to Hurricane Debbie. So peak intensity was category one strength with 80 mile per hour winds, but it had those two landfalls in Florida and then again in South Carolina. And then the interesting thing is much longer term, it actually made a historic rainfall in Quebec. So we're talking all the way up to Canada after making landfall along the Gulf Coast and then the southeast of the US in the Atlantic. So just to show that after landfall, these things can still be very, very impactful and they are still very impactful on where it actually does make that official landfall. So Hurricane Francine, we had peak intensity of 100 mile per hour maximum sustained winds, category two strength. It did make landfall in Louisiana and we saw flooding along the northeastern Gulf of Mexico. I will say this system in particular actually dissipated pretty quickly inland. And then lastly, we have Hurricane Helene, peak intensity of 140 mile per hour maximum sustained winds, category four strength. That was at landfall in the Big Bend of Florida, and it brought historic storm surge along the Gulf Coast. We were seeing that from the Big Bend and then even down to Tampa, Florida. But what we saw inland as this storm was still a category one hurricane as it neared Atlanta, Georgia. We had catastrophic flooding in Atlanta as well as the Carolinas. And just going through some stats, Atlanta actually had their first ever flash flood emergency, whereas we were looking at historic and catastrophic rainfall in the Carolinas near Asheville, North Carolina, to be exact landslides, roads that were just completely washed away and complete devastation from that. So I think this is just a friendly reminder that, hey, we are still in hurricane season and no, maybe we haven't had the sheer amount of tropical storms, hurricanes, you know, name storms this season that maybe was once predicted at the beginning of the season, but each and every storm has been impactful, not just from where we've seen landfall, but also inland. So good reminder to make sure that you review your hurricane plan with your family and friends, really anybody that lives along the Gulf Coast, Atlantic, and then points inland as well. And as always, we're gonna continue to bring you the latest right here on Fox 26. Fox, Fox Local is going to be the best place to stay updated. Back to you. Yes, yeah, see, I think a, a great point there where you know, the preseason forecasts were for maybe 23 storms or 25 storms, which we may still have, by the way. But regardless of whether we reach those soaring heights of a record number of storms, think of how impactful the season has been so far with four landfalling hurricanes in the United States on the Gulf Coast, one in Texas, two in Florida, one in Louisiana. Well, what's coming next? Well, if you'll stay with us uh, coming up after the break, I'm going to have a rundown of what's happening in the tropics. And of course, we'll also talk about our local forecast here because we still get to enjoy a few more days of some really, really nice weather. So I'll see you back here in just a couple of minutes. Fox 26 is your Gulf Coast Weather Authority. And while our area is vast, this storm could bring widespread flooding and dangerous winds to our entire Our state. forecasting zeroes in. These storm cells over the ship channel are particularly dangerous. From your to... community. Memorial Park is getting hammered right now with heavy downpours. Right down to your neighborhood streets. We're starting to see the water rise along Buffalo Bayou. It's hyper local coverage from your Gulf Coast Weather Authority only on Fox 26. Fox 26 News at 9. Our breaking bond reports hold judges accountable. A 20 year old charged with manslaughter. News Edge at 10. Your clues help find the missing. Her son never made it to his Investigations city. that get results. Weeknights on Fox 26. Engaging and shareable. Visit the Fox 26 Houston Facebook page. Need a legal question answered? Fox 26 legal expert Chris Tritico can help. But this may be a pretty sizable claim that your sister has. Just send your legal questions to fox26law at fox.com. Then tune into Houston's morning show every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 a.m. to hear your questions answered.
The news doesn't stop on weekends. We're learning more details about a story we first brought you yesterday morning. And neither do we. But as we head throughout the afternoon, that's when the rain starts moving in from the southwest. Fox 26 Morning News Weekends with Denise Middleton. Well, now to a story you'll see only on Fox. The family of a beloved bartender in North Texas. And meteorologist Allison Gargaro. Right now, we are seeing some of the heaviest rain start to push off to our... Fox 26 Morning News Weekends, Saturdays and Sundays beginning at 5 a.m. The Fox 26 Weather App with more features in one easy-to-use screen. Current weather at a glance. High-resolution interactive radar. Severe weather alerts. Video forecasts and much more. It's the power of your Gulf Coast weather authority in the palm of your hand. The Fox 26 Weather App. Download it today. The Fox 26 YouTube page, your home for the best Fox 26 has to offer. The latest news. Good evening, I'm Caroline Collins. Topping the run. Our most popular local programs like the Isaiah Factor Uncensored. Why the hell are so many people burnt out? And stories you may have missed from series like Breaking Bond. The quicker we get a grasp on what's happening. Yeah. Sullivan Smart Sense and The Missing. Please pick up the phone and call the police. Remember, you can remain anonymous. The Fox 26 YouTube page. Like and subscribe today. All right, welcome back. Once again, thanks for watching on Forecasting with Friends. So at the top of the show, we ended with this graphic, which was that uh, I shared with you that we had a new tropical storm, Kirk, that formed in the Atlantic, uh, along with Isaac and Joyce, none of which are going to have any effect on our area. But we are going to have to watch the Caribbean Sea and the Gulf here because it does look like it's going to get kind of messy, kind of active here over the next few days. And by messy, I mean there's really nothing to point to right now. We have a tropical wave there. It looks like there's another tropical wave that's moving in there. And then we have just sort of a general tropical disturbance or just unsettled area down there in the Bay of Campeche, the southern Gulf of Mexico. The bottom line is we have a front right there. That front, we're to the north of it where it's nice and dry and clear and sunny. But anywhere along that front or to the south of it is fair game for anything to start forming out there over the next several days, maybe the next week or two. So you'll see some action firing up along that front. You're going to see, I think, a little spin there that the Fox model is showing going up into Mississippi, Alabama. You'll see some unsettled weather down there with some storms. And then at the end of the loop here, as we head into, let's see, Friday. So this, you know, just about five days from now, you start to see this circulation showing up there. Now notice everything still looks quiet here, and that's what I'm kind of leaning toward that we probably won't see that much around here, or if we do, it'll mainly just be along the coastline. But right now, everything is a bit uh, subject to change. I think what, what you would call nebulous. There's just a lot that's going to be happening out there. Just little swirls here and there over the next week, maybe the next seven to 10 days out there into the Gulf of Mexico. So it's going to be interesting to see. In the meantime, Nothing but sunshine out there. It's a continuation of the same pattern with dry air where we have warm morning temperatures, but then we also have pretty hot afternoon high temperatures. So we got down to the 60s, even the low 60s in some spots this morning because the dew point value is low and that's sort of like your your um, floor for how low you can get as far as the lows are concerned. But now with very light wind, sunshine and dry air, we're up to 86. I think still pretty nice, but we'll probably climb into the middle 90s later today. Katie, 91 degrees here at 1128 in the morning, 87 in the woodlands, 87 for Laporte and 88 in League City. Now the same conditions that allow us to warm up fast are also giving us some issues with air quality, at least potentially today. We may have some excessive levels of ozone forming heading into the afternoon. So if you have a harder lung condition, don't overexert yourself outside through the day today. When you stick around, if you can join us for Fox 26 News at noon, Delon and I'll be back with that.